All right, hello. So this is kind of different, a little weird, experimenting here. So this has come out of, uh, I wanted to, to do some topics on my podcast and it was hard to find a guest to cover said topic. So I was like, man, and I found myself researching these and stuff, and I'm like, this would be a fun video, don't know how to do it. So this is what I'm gonna try to do here, is uh, go through a topic like something I'm interested in, like the history of Dr. Pepper. I've been looking for a guest, but couldn't really find anyone good. So I'm just gonna research the topic. You can follow along with me. I got my computer screen up here. Cool, that's why I'm over the side. It's computer screen you can see. We're just gonna read through the internet together and see what we find. Test this video style out. Let me know if you like it, uh, if it's interesting to you, and um, let's do it. So, let's start. History of Dr. Pepper. Ooh, Dr. Pepper Museum, perfect. Got some water. Wow, so first off, there's a real museum in Waco, Texas. Oh. This is cool. Well, I have to say this. This does not feel Dr. Pepper approved. It feels like it's a side venture. Wow, 10 bucks to get in this museum. Well, definitely gonna have to go there. All right, let's get back into the history. Got distracted already. Okay, Keurig Dr. Pepper. Is he also the inventor of the coffee Keurig machines? Created, manufactured, and sold beginning in 1885 in the central Texas town of Waco. Wow, the Waco kid was drinking Dr. Pepper. So this says Dr. Pepper is the oldest of the major brand soft drinks in America, older than Coca-Cola. Does that check out? 1885. Coca-Cola was also 1885 by John Pepperton. Wow, 85, what a year for sodas, for colas. Oh, I thought his name was Keurig Dr. Pepper. No, no. That's the name of the company. The guy's name was Charles Alderton. Oh, got it. He was a young pharmacist, of course. All these sodas were in the soda fountains and the pharmacies. <laughs> he mix spent his time mixing up medicine, but he also liked to mix up carbonated drinks. He liked the way the drugstore smelled, with all the fruit syrup flavor smells mixing together in the air, so he decided to create a drink that tasted like that smell. It would be really cool to go back and smell this guy's pharmacy and see if you could smell those 23 delicious Dr. Pepper flavors. So he came up with the drink, they started selling it at the store, and they began by calling it a Waco. Hey, shoot me a Waco there! Morrison, the store owner, is credited with naming the drink Dr. Pepper, but the origin of the name is unclear. Well, that's disappointing. Yeah, why Why is there no period anymore? They dropped the period in the 1950s. I guess he wasn't a real doctor. First name, doctor, but he's not a doctor. Had to drop the period. Dr. Pepper's getting popular. More people want the syrup. They couldn't, didn't have enough room to produce enough at their fountain anymore. So this guy, Rob Lazenby, comes into the scene. But the inventor, Alderton, wasn't inv he wasn't interested in pursuing it, so he suggested that Morrison and Lazenby develop it further. Uh-oh. I hope Alderton got some credit. Some money. Oh no, it looks like Alderton is just out of the picture now. Who knows, this is the Dr. Pepper, you know, Disney-fied version of, the, of history. This could not even be the actual thing. No way Alderton was like, just go sell the soda, enjoy it, I invented it, but you reap all the rewards. No way. Okay, classic early 20th century, they took it to the 1904 World's Fair. The 20 people, 20 million people attending. They got Frankfurter's hamburgers, and they got themselves some delicious Dr. Pepper. It says here Dr. Pepper had Old Doc, a typical country doctor character with monocle and top hat that became the Dr. Pepper trademark of the 20s and 30s. Oh, we gotta look him up. Is that Old Doc? That's gotta be him. Monocle and the top hat. Look at Old Doc. Yeah, I don't know. I'm okay that they dropped him. He's not the best <laughs> mascot for a soda. But then again, Mr. Peanuts, a uh, mascot for peanuts. Ooh, look at that, that's a cool can. Ooh, Dublin Dr. Pepper. We're gonna get into Dublin Dr. Pepper if you've never heard of that story. 
So during the 30s, they've discovered that sugar provided energy, but that the average person experiences a letdown at 10.30 a.m., 2.30 p.m., and 4.30 p.m. And so they said, drink a bite to eat at 10, 2, and 4. I guess you're having some sugar from Dr. Pepper to keep you pepped up. That's a weird marketing campaign. <laughs> the Friendly Pepper Upper. Have a Dr. Pepper, the Friendly Pepper Upper. Dr. Pepper just can't keep their slogans together. They keep changing it. The most misunderstood soft drink, the most original soft drink ever in the whole wide world, a little wordy. Be a pepper? Be you? That sounds like, just do it. And their newest slogan out today, there's just more to it. Man, I never, uh, I never understood these, like, marketing, advertising slogans. They just make no sense. Especially the Liberty one. Liber it's like Liberty Insurance, and they go, Liberty, 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 Liberty. They just say the Liberty four times. The emphasis on the 23 fruit flavors. So it really is just 23 flavors of fruit? Is it like, like banana, strawberry, raspberry all mixed together? 23 different fruits that make Dr. Pepper taste that way? Well, let's find out. So this is, of course, it's a proprietary blend of 23 flavors. Dr. Pepper hasn't revealed it. But super fans speculate that these are, uh, the flavors are Amaretto, almond, blackberry, black licorice, caramel, carrot, clove, cherry, cola, ginger, juniper, lemon, molasses, nutmeg, orange, prune, plum, pepper, duh, root beer, oh, root beer, rum, raspberry, tomato, and vanilla. That is interesting. It could just be these weird, these soda flavors that this guy put together to make Dr. Pepper. It's just all these other flavors combined. Wow, that's really interesting. Prune, there's prune in Dr. Pepper. No wonder they're not revealing that. I wanna see what happened to Charles Alderton. I hope he died a wealthy man in a swimming pool of Dr. Pepper. Oh, this says, in the 1950s, the Dr. Lo Dr. Pepper logo was redesigned. In the new version, the text slanted, whatever. Designers felt that the period made the doctor look like die semicolon. So for reasons of style and legibility, the period was dropped. So that's why they dropped the period. Makes sense. So I'm trying to find more about Charles Alderton. Looks like he was private, so there's not a ton about him. But it really looks like he was just a pharmacist who loved, who liked soda. So he made Dr. Pepper as like a hobby, but he didn't want to become a, a sodaist. He just wanted to focus on his medical career. So this says that he sold his recipe to, I assume, the, the pharmacy owner and, and that other fellow we talked about. Don't know how much he sold it for. Hopefully he made a little bit, but it seems like he wasn't really interested in profits. It didn't really matter. Looks like he just stayed a chemist, a, or a, yeah, a chemist and a pharmacist. He was considered to be one of the leading chemists in the South. That is very cool. So he was just happy with his work as a chemist, I guess. But he moved away to New Orleans for a bit, but then he moved back to Waco. Imagine seeing all that. So it was 1885 when he invented Dr. Pepper, but then he didn't die until 1941. So he got to see this thing he invented just explode and go everywhere. I wonder if he was, if he drank a lot of it, if he loved the drink. But yeah, he wasn't involved with it. He just liked being his own little chemist. I couldn't respect that. Wow, look at this, Hot Dr. Pepper. I've never heard of this. Hot Dr. Pepper was developed many years ago as a refreshing winter drink. Heat Dr. Pepper in a saucepan to 180 degrees, place a thin slice of lemon at the bottom of a coffee mug, and pour the heated Dr. Pepper over the lemon. Wow. But does it taste good? This Jed Porter from Serious Eats says, it tastes like a thick sweet tea. So kind of like hot cider. He says, I can't guarantee you'll fall in love with hot, doctor, <laughs> with hot Dr. Pepper, but I'll tell you this, it's going to be better than you think. Man, that's interesting. I have to try that. Hot Dr. Pepper. Yeah, look at these little ads. It looks like Dr. Pepper really ran like ad campaigns for Hot Dr. Pepper. Probably. People are drinking, they're in the board meeting. People are only drinking Dr. Pepper in the summer when it's hot. They think it's an ice cold, refreshing drink. How do we get these people drinking Dr. Pepper the whole year? Oh, by golly, I got it. Hot Dr. Pepper. They'll be drinking it in the, in the cold, in the, <laughs> in the holiday season. That's not a bad idea. I gotta give it to him. That's a cool, that's interesting to try. It's a cool marketing idea to try it. And I'm, I'm gonna try hot Dr. Pepper. I gotta see what this stuff tastes like. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I remember this Dr. Pepper 10. They targeted it 
directly to men. The slogan was, it's not for women. That was so weird, that didn't last long. Wow, listen to this, Dr. Pepper isn't legally classified as a cola. So I guess Coca-Cola and Pepsi had, you know, set out these nationwide networks and, you know, said, hey, if you're selling our products, you can't sell anything else. So it made it tough for Dr. Pepper to get into these new markets, but it changed in 1963 when a federal court ruled that Dr. Pepper's unique flavor kept it from being a cola product, which meant that bottlers were free to distribute Dr. Pepper without running afoul of their exclusive deals with Coca-Cola and Pepsi. That's interesting. So, yeah, is Dr. Pepper not owned by Coca-Cola or Pepsi? That's cool. They own themselves. Curing Dr. Pepper owns Dr. Pepper. You think that Coke or Pepsi would have tried to buy them out by now? Uh, but if, you know, of course, the Coca-Cola company has their knockoff, their knockoff of Dr. Pepper called Mr. Pib. Now it's called Pib Extra everywhere. Have you noticed that they changed Mr. Pib to Pib Extra? I don't know why they did that, but I gotta say, sometimes Pib Extra is kind of better than Dr. Pepper. They have it at Del Taco. It's really good. <laughs> they first introduced. Mr. Pib as Peppo to complete to compete against Dr. Pepper, but the name was changed to Mr. Pib after Dr. Pepper sued the Coca-Cola company. Duh, jeez. The original test markets for Mr. Pib in 1972 were located in Waco, Texas, the birthplace of Dr. Pepper. Man, that's they're attacking them. So it was in 2001 they came up with the new formula Pib Extra that added cinnamon flavor, which replaced the original formula. Yeah. It's pretty similar, but Pib Extra is damn good. I bet they didn't want to be like, well, this is Mr. Pib, not as educated as Dr. Pepper. You know, it, the doctorate is, is better, but this is, he's a respected mister. So they just got rid of that completely, and we said Pib Extra. Extra better than Dr. Pepper. Does Pepsi have a Dr. Pepper knockoff? No, Pepsi doesn't have a knockoff of Dr. Pepper, but you do see, a lot of times you see Pepsi products with Dr. Pepper, like kind of side by side. Maybe they're, they're more willing to work together than the Coke company and Dr. Pepper. So there's the Dr. Pepper Snapple Group, also called Dr. Pepper 7-Up. Oh, interesting, which is based in Plano, Texas, but then they're also part of the larger Keurig Dr. Pepper. Interesting. Okay, so there's a lot of products that they have. So this, they're kind of like maybe the third smaller cousin, brother of Pepsi and Coke. But they have, look at, they have Dr. Pepper, Snapple, RC Cola, which is pretty underrated. That stuff's actually good. A&W, delicious root beer, better than Mug. Never touch Mug. 7-Up, Schweppes, Sunkiss Canada Dry, Big Red, Mott's Vernon, Hawaiian Punch, and Squirt. Okay. Yeah, Keurig Dr. Pepper has a lot going for it. They must be Keurig the coffee stuff. Oh, look at this. Keurig Green Mountain acquired Dr. Pepper Snapple Group. Wow, so Keurig took over Dr. Pepper. I like their logo. They have a cool kind of vintage -y logo. Yeah, so of course, it's this is the Keurig Brewing System, Keurig K-Cup company. All right, enough of that. That's, you know, of the, the big conglomerate stuff. We can get into that later forever. So these are all the Dr. Pepper flavors they have now. I've never been into the zero sugar ones. I like the normal sodas or the real sugar cane ones. Those are good. Dr. Pepper cream soda is good. Cherry's good. Caffeine free is nice when you don't want that. Not, I don't, I'm not into diet. Cherry vanilla. I'm lost a new diet. Cherry vanilla Dr. Pepper. Remember that? Oh, and then Dr. Pepper made with real sugar. I want to try that. I was looking for Dr. Pepper limited edition flavors, but limited edition bike popped up. Look at this bike. That's pretty cool. A Dr. Pepper bike. Man, those are floating around somewhere. I would love to have one of those. So Dr. Pepper has done all these kind of limited edition flavors, like all sodas do, I guess, but they've done this dark berry, which I've never had a chance to try, but I think people freak out over it. Yeah, it's just a limited edition. I've never... I wish I would have tried it. I hope it'll come back. I really think people love this. Yeah, they've done Dr. Pepper Vanilla Float, Dr. Pepper Berries and Cream. Ah, oh, I wish I could have tried these. Look at this Dr. Pepper Icing on the Cake Birthday Cake flavor. There's no way that tastes good. It's just got to be overly sweet, I'm guessing. But look at this. Dr. Pepper just came out with Dr. Pepper Fantastic Chocolate. And you know I was on that. And you know I got myself two cans of it. Look at that. Dr. Pepper 
fantastic chocolate. Literally just got this like a couple days ago. We haven't even opened it yet. Uh, we're waiting for a special occasion to try that, but I heard it's super sweet. I'm very curious to try what this stuff tastes like. I, I'm really not expecting it to taste good, but we'll see. Okay, so I've kind of been looking around and it, all the Dr. Pepper history that I've seen kind of checks out with what we went through, so that's good. I think we kind of got the history covered. I want to look into this Dr. Pepper Museum a little bit more. Wow, look at that. That looks cool. Home of Dr. Pepper. Got an old truck there. Ooh, this looks really, really cool. Wow, what the heck is that? Look at that old bottling setup. That's 7-Up. 7-Up Dr. Pepper. They must, they must be friends. Holt Beverage Co. Yeah, I'm sure there's a whole history here. We don't need to get into all that, though. So it looks like there's kind of a nice little museum that you get to walk through, read the history that we just talked about. And then it looks like there's also an old-fashioned soda bar at the end where you get to have some soda, of course. Who's not going to want a Dr. Pepper after going through that? I love visiting places like this. They're so fun to me. I have to go to this. Okay, well, now we've got to talk about Dublin Dr. Pepper. So this is, I think there, there was a documentary made about this, about Dublin Dr. Pepper. So let's get into it. I kind of know the story, but I want to give you the right stuff. So Dublin Dr. Pepper is just the name given to, they call it a style of Dr. Pepper made by the Dublin Dr. Pepper Bottling Company, company in Dublin, Texas. But it was, it was just Dr. Pepper that they were bottling, but people began to call it Dublin Dr. Pepper because they followed the original recipe using cane sugar as the sweetener as opposed to the newer high fructose corn syrup. So when Dr. Pepper was like, hey everybody, we're switching the formula from the delicious cane sugar over to high fructose corn syrup, Dublin Dr. Pepper was like, uh-uh, we are not doing that. We are keeping the original cane sugar. So they, and they let them do that for a while. So that's why people called this Dublin Dr. Pepper because it did taste different than Dr. Pepper with high fructose corn syrup like after a certain amount of time. But wait, the, the plot thickens. On January, in January 2012, it was announced that Dublin Dr. Pepper will no longer be produced after the Dublin Dr. Pepper company settled the trademark dispute because they were marketing themselves as Dublin Dr. Pepper and Dr. Pepper was like, no, you cannot use our name. So, in 2004, the surviving Dublin bottling company was the subject of the documentary Bottled Up. So that, yeah, I did see that documentary. So you can still go and visit this place too, which is awesome. It's on my list in Dublin, Texas. You can go and visit the, the Dublin Dr. Pepper bottling place, the Dublin soda place. So basically, Dublin Dr. Pepper bottler was only allowed to sell, according to their contract, they should only be able to sell Dr. Pepper in that Dublin, Texas area and a little bit further out. But their Dublin Dr. Pepper with the real cane sugar was so popular, people were coming in to get this stuff and it was kind of naturally spreading out. So the Dr. Pepper Snapple Company sued them saying, hey, you're selling to way farther than you're allowed to. But it's because they had a better product. Because it was better. Why doesn't Dr. Pepper just switch to the better thing, which which now they sell at least that pure cane uh, Dr. Pepper. So they, they did kind of get back to it, which is cool. But essentially that lawsuit made them stop selling Dublin Dr. Pepper. Uh, the Dr. Pepper Snapple Group acquired the rights to the Dublin Dr. Pepper franchise. Sad story. David Crush Goliath? Or no, Goliath Crush David. Yeah. And they would no longer produce Dublin Dr. Pepper. So, a unit of Dr. Pepper will continue to distribute a sugar-sweetened Dr. Pepper for the six county territory in Central Texas, but they will not be referred to as Dublin Dr. Pepper. So as of today, Dublin Bottling Works continues to produce various other sugar-sweetened sodas, both locally and online. So they don't really sell it anymore. Yeah, so look at this. You can see that they actually put Dublin Dr. Pepper up on the bottle and, and marketed that. So I can see why Dr. Pepper had a problem with that. But look at, yeah, now they have Dr. Pepper made with sugar. So you could, uh, I guess you could still get this kind of now. So here's the thing though too, is Dublin is still a bottling company. They still sell sodas, Dublin Soda Bottling Company. Um, you can go visit them, which is cool. They're on my list, like I said, to go visit. So, but around me here, we have this place called Galco's Old World Grocery. Galco's Soda Pop Shop, and the guy is a 
is a savant when it comes to soda. So he told me that this is basically Dublin Dr. Pepper. It's called Dublin 19, Dublin 1891 Red Cola. And I'm not sure, I'm not convinced that it's actually like the original Dublin Dr. Pepper. It tastes Dr. Pepper-y to me, um, but not quite. In fact, um, the Soda Jerks here, who I actually interviewed in an episode previously, he calls it more of like a, a Dr. Pepper Cola, which I agree with. It's really good. Definitely give this a try if you can find it, but I'm not sure I wouldn't call this Dublin Dr. Pepper, I don't think, because they're not even allowed to make it. They don't have the, the recipe for Dr. Pepper anymore. Um, but I am curious to try that, that cane sugar Dr. Pepper. So it was episode 21 that I interviewed um, Aaron from the Soda Jerks. Man, that was a long time ago, November 12th, 2018. But yeah, that was a fun episode. If you're interested in soda, check that out. Well, there you have it, folks. That's been pretty much the history of Dr. Pepper. That was fun going through that for me. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this, so uh, I might continue doing this. I think I will. I'll try a few more, see how it goes. Um, let me know what you think, if, if you kind of enjoyed the format, if it was interesting for you, or if it was too long, too boring. I can maybe, I could try doing different things. So um, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, goodbye. Hey, thanks for watching this video. This is my dog, Murphy. And these are dog treats. Now I'll give Murphy one of these dog treats. And all you have to do is press the like button. Just press that little like button right down there at the bottom of this video. And this sweet, adorable, cute little puppy gets a treat. All thanks to you. All right, you did it? Okay. I believe you. You said you did it. There you go, Murph. She got that treat because of you. Now, I'll eat one of these treats. And all you have to do is click that subscribe button right there pointing to it. Just click that subscribe button. Subscribe to curiosity -ness with me, Travis DeRose. Get lots of good video, and I'll eat this treat. All right, you did that too? That's not very good. Bro, not very good.